This is very familiar, isn't it? Sitting back, laid back on the couch, remote in hand, watching something that's fun on TV. It's always nice to depressurize and just get that entertainment. The danger is that this is becoming a lifestyle in North America. The average person spends 2,000 hours a year watching TV. And if you've unplugged and gone to streaming services like Netflix or Hulu or YouTube, uh, it's still pretty bad. It's a thousand hours a year and growing rapidly. In North America, we've, and other countries, we have built a culture of isolating ourselves night after night in these little boxes we call homes and sitting down in front of this media to just be entertained. Now, this is not judgment. If that's what you choose, rock and roll. But I'll tell you, there is nobody that I've coached, nobody that I've met who's said, oh my God, I am so fulfilled and passionate in my life that it is such a yes life because I get to go home and snuggle up with Netflix every night. It's something that you do for entertainment, for fun, to let go. But the passion comes from other things in the life. And the thing is, it's not a bad life. It's just meh, right? And we don't choose this. It's just something you get into a habit just of doing what you know, what you've always done, and you get into a rut. And the trouble with being in a rut is you start mistaking the edge of the ditch for the horizon. Several years ago, I spent the summer in Greece, in a city about the same size as the one I'm living in now. And one night, we were up way up high looking down over the whole city, and I was amazed because all of the apartment buildings, all of those homes were dark. Everybody, unless they had little kids, were out at the cafes and the tavernas and the discos with their friends. Now, look out over a typical North American city, even ones further south where the climate is as warm as you'd find in the Mediterranean. And what do you see at night? All of the apartment buildings are all lit up because everyone is home in their little boxes watching the big box. Now, there's nothing wrong with watching TV or Netflix or YouTube or Hulu. I have some favorite shows of my own and I appreciate that you're using new media right now to watch this. The danger is when it becomes the norm night after night. Something I, I'm seeing pop up on Facebook more and more is people posting about asking what can they watch on Netflix because they've already watched everything. What's interesting? What else is there that they can watch? Or complaints about something like this popping up. Well, hate to tell you this, but the reason that you're seeing that is that you've been sitting for hours uh, without moving. And the data actually shows, there's research that shows that when you're binging, you're in an altered trance state and you're not really digesting all of that information anyway. So let's look at the data to see just what the situation is. In America, the average American watches TV five hours a day. The latest data I showed in Canada is it's a little less. It's, it's three hours a day. Now, for those of you who've unplugged, uh, this data, the viewing on these services is growing rapidly. And while Netflix has the largest number of uh, subscribers, uh, the, the most used one is Hulu. The average Hulu users as of a year ago were viewing about three hours a day. Netflix was a bit about two and a quarter hours a day. YouTube a couple of hours a day. The thing to note about these numbers is that they're all increasing. For example, this study from a year ago that showed that Netflix users at that time were watching twice as much as they had five years ago. So these numbers are going way up. But what's important here is to start looking at what are your numbers. So if you were to look back over the last month, and look at all the shows you watched, all the shows you binged, the videos that you have 
watched on YouTube on a typical day, how long do you spend that time? Start to add up that time. If it's hard to do a month, do it for the last week or at least start with the, the last couple of days. But if you can at least get a week, you can get an average rating of what's there. And the reality is, um, if you don't do something to shift, that's going to continue. In fact, the data shows it's going to increase. So once you have your weekly or monthly number of how many hours you spend on media, multiply that out by 12 for the monthly or 52 for the weekly and figure out how many hours you are actually spending in front of the screens with media. This is a tough thing to do, but it's really important if you want to start to shift from the meh into a little bit more yeah. Now let's just take a, a, a number for example, okay? Let's say you've got, you, you, you watch three hours a day, that's 21 hours a week, 1,092 hours a year, or 136.58 hour days a year. Now, I'm not saying you should stop. No way. No. You, you know, if this is an entertainment. It's fun. It's great to watch. So let's say you took half of that. If you were to take out of that 136 uh, days, 70 of them out of the year, okay? What does that come to? That comes to 1440-hour work weeks, so here's the magic question. Are there things that you've dreamed of doing? Are there hobbies that you've wanted to try out? Is there a new career, volunteering? Or do you just get a sense that there's something more that, that you want to do, that, that where you are isn't exactly it? Well, if you were to take those 70 days, those 14 weeks, think about how much you could do in 14 weeks weeks to realize that. It's not about doing that right away. It's, uh, you know, let's say the first week, you just take one hour, one hour, and say what could be options, okay? The next week, you schedule two hours where you would normally be sitting in front of the, the, the TV and explore those options, start to look at it, start to uh, find what could be possible. Maybe it's if you're not sure what it is that you want, what are ways that you could start to explore that? And then slowly start to build up. But as you bring more passion into your life, the re reality is I, you're actually going to find it hard to create time for watching because that's going to be so much more fulfilling for you. But the thing to realize is that it's going to take effort to do that. I mean, this is easy to say. Why isn't everyone doing it? That's because everyone's stuck in the familiar zone. People call it the comfort zone. It's usually not comfortable. It's just familiar. And we are stuck in that trap of doing the same thing over and over. Now, getting through that, getting through uh, doubts you may have about yourself, those are other issues. But most people say they don't have the time to really find what is that, oh yes, that passion in their life. That's not true. If you are spending your time on uh, TV, on Netflix, on YouTube, you absolutely do have the time. The choice is yours. Are you going to continue? And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like say, no judgment. Are you going to continue living that? Which is not bad, but it's meh. Or are you going to start investing and moving some of that time over to create a whole lot more yeah in your life?